you guys. Today we're going to go on a little adventure through Formar looking for some pine needles to make shortbread cookies. Now shortbread is really traditional to make during the new year because people didn't have very much left in their larder. You eat what you can find or what you can store. So right now in the winter time we can't find a whole lot. Take a look. You don't see a whole lot of green out in that field. There's no fruits, there's no vegetables, uh, there's a lot of gray and brown, but what do you see that's still green? Now most pine trees are edible. Um, the couple that are not are called Norfolk Island Pine, Ponderosa Pine, and then yew trees are also evergreens that are not edible. So when you go foraging, it's important that you know what you're picking and don't put anything in your mouth unless you know for sure what it is. So a really good identification book or a naturalist expert to help you out. And then you can eat a lot of things off the land and try some wild recipes that maybe your ancestors ate. This one right here is red cedar. And like other juniper species, it has these little blue berries and it's quite aromatic. Um, it is a little sharper than common juniper, but it is still edible. This one right here, this is Serbian spruce. You can eat it. I don't really recommend this one. It has kind of a pungent flavor. It's one of the stronger ones I was talking about. This one right here, this one is a Scots pine. And I'm gonna show you the cluster of needles. They're a little shorter than the red pine. There it is. They'll actually take off some of the bark and gather, scrape the inside of the bark and pound it into a flour and make bread out of scotch pine. First order of business when cooking, wash your hands and wash any foraged ingredients. I've already washed my hands, so here is the bottle full of conifers that we collected out on our walk, and we'll put those in a colander. Now we're only going to use the needles but they need to dry out a little bit first. So I've laid them out and we have all our samples. We got white pine, we got balsam, and we got white spruce. And that should make a very interesting flavor palette. So we'll let these dry and then we'll take the needles off and we have a couple ways to chop them up. I'm gonna use a blender, but you can use scissors to chop them into little pieces. A little over one cup of flour, one cup and two tablespoons. And main ingredient, heaping tablespoon of pine needles. I'm going to chop that up together. If you do it without the flour in a blender, the pine needles will just float around and won't get any smaller. But if you do it with the flour, then it helps it all blend together. Or you can hand cut it with scissors. All right, let's go. chopped up within the flour and it should smell really strongly like pine but don't worry about it because when it bakes it loses a little bit of that zing and leaves just a nice citrus flavor. Okay so now we have half a cup of coconut oil and about a third of a cup of powdered sugar, a little over heaping, and half to a quarter, you can use a little less teaspoon of salt in a bowl. And we're going to mash it up with a fork until it's really well blended. Alright, the 
finish, cut out cookies, and I slide them in. And they need to cook for about 10 minutes. Hi, cookies. Get away right away at Genesee County Parks. For more, visit geneseecountyparks.org.